everybody. Um, you know, coming at you with another bright red face video because I had a really hot shower and then I had to blow dry my hair and even though my hair is really short, um, it's really, really thick so it takes about 25 minutes to blow dry, even though it's short. I even have my head shaved at the back to take some of the weight out, um, like an undercut and it's still ridiculously thick. Also, if I have a little bit of a lisp, which is a little bit annoying, it's because I have my tooth whitening stuff in. Um, so I've got like a tray in with my tooth whitening stuff in it. Um, so yeah. My teeth look quite white on camera anyway, but um, I drink a lot of tea. So I get like that yellow sort of staining from it which is a bit annoying um but i can't stop drinking tea because i love it um so yeah i also whiten my teeth with professional um whitening stuff not um like bought you know like um high street shops like boots sell like the kits and things like that and celebrities always are like you know, paid to say things about the ones with the like little electric light that you put in your mouth. Um, but yeah, they don't work as well. Um, and after I had braces, uh, I decided that I would treat myself to teeth whitening. So I actually use the um, the Polar Night. Comes in a little syringe like this, um, and it comes with a little uh, bit like that that you put on top of where that white cap is and then you um put it into the tray and then put it in i don't know why i'm giving you a rundown that's also why i've got um this quite heavy lip balm on um because sometimes if it um it can leak out of the tray if you overfill it i don't think i have overfilled it but i always put a lip balm on just to protect uh my mouth because this stuff's really strong and if it leaks out it can like burn delicate skin and skin on your lips is quite delicate. So I just spent two and a half minutes telling you about my tooth whitening routine. But you know I like to come in here and talk random stuff as well as uh, anxiety and depression stuff because I don't know, it's, it's really weird. It's kind of like a daily diary for me and I've said that before already, but I just really like coming on here and just having this like chat rundown before um before i go to bed it's really nice um so yeah uh so i'm in bed i am gonna go to sleep as soon as i film this because i am starting work a little bit earlier tomorrow because it's our christmas party um so i'm starting an hour early so that i can leave an hour early so that I have time to um, get ready and get to the place where we're having our Christmas party, which I'm really excited about. Um, in tomorrow's video, I will probably um, film while I'm like putting my makeup on or something, because um, like big social events can be quite an anxiety trigger for me. Um, so instead of talking about it now, I'm gonna talk about tomorrow when it's actually the night and I actually I'm going um, so it's more of a truer representation of how I feel uh, I haven't been sleeping very well the past few days I don't know why um, I usually have a cup of tea in bed but I've decided not to because I don't think caffeine helps um, when you're trying to fall asleep uh, usually I sleep all right and I drink quite a lot of tea anyway but you know also, some people don't like to drink um, anything with caffeine because um, it can be quite um, triggering for your anxiety. It can kind of heighten it a little bit. Um, so I do know a lot of people who have actually cut out caffeine completely. Um, I also like coffee, so I did go through a stage of just drinking decaffeinated coffee. But I feel like for me, caffeine doesn't make all that much difference to my anxiety, if I'm being completely honest. Um, if I'm doing something that's like really, really triggering uh, to my anxiety, for instance, if I have to do like a long car drive or something, that can be really triggering for me. 
Um, so I would maybe sort of avoid caffeine then. Um, but in like day to day life, I don't think it affects me too much. Um, so yeah, if you do suffer with anxiety, try cutting caffeine out uh, for a little bit and see if that helps because I know for some people it's an absolute godsend and um, obviously caffeine reacts differently in uh, people's bodies so what might not um, necessarily affect me too much could really affect somebody else um, and you might not realise that caffeine's doing that to you and making it um, a bit worse for you uh, so definitely give it a go um, I feel like this is kind of like a tips video for coping with anxiety um so another tip would be um having a nice bath i think i've said that in another video but that can be really really relaxing um i read this thing which is really really weird but i read this thing that like the reason like the human race as a collective likes to bathe as in like not showering actually getting in a bath um is because being like submerged in water um simulates being in the womb and it can be really really comforting for some people um which makes a lot of sense actually um some people hate baths though which is fair enough um i love a bath but i can only stay in for about 20 minutes before i get too hot and then it starts to stress me out and i have to get out but i can't just have like a warm bath it has to be like hot so it's my own fault really same as my showers that's why i'm always bright red after i shower oh i just tugged my um lightning cable um another good one is um essential oils i really really like essential oils um I mean, I already mentioned that Reiki worked really, really well for me, and that's a really holistic approach. And I'm, I think burning essential oils is as well. Um, but lavender, burning lavender or uh, diffusing lavender. I have this like um, uh, diffuser. You can get them off Amazon and um, it like mists it. So you get the smell, but you don't have to burn it. And the mist is, um, is like cool, so it doesn't get hot. Um, which can be a lot safer if you have small children or if you have pets and you don't want to burn something uh, in case they burn themselves. Um, so the diffuser can be a really, really good option. If you go on Amazon and just put in essential oil diffuser, it's like a little bowl with a little dome on top and the mist comes out of the top and it's, it's literally just water inside. You fill it up with water, dot your essential oil in, turn it on, and I have one that has like a mood light on it as well. So it like changes colour. And um, it's kind of like, you know, for a lot of senses. Because um, obviously you get the smell from the essential oil. You get the sound of the water, which can be really relaxing. It's like a really light, like bubble, kind of misty sound. Uh, and then you also have the light, so that's visual. Um, so it works really well for a lot of people because different things... You know, people react differently to different sensory things. Um, so having all three is just brilliant. Um, so yeah, I would definitely give that a go because it's really, really good. Um, I also use um, this, which is a body lotion by Lush. And it's called Sleepy. Um, I have the body wash as well, which smells absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's lavender and organic cocoa butter and oatmeal, which oats, um, all natural ingredients. It also has um, tonka in it. Tonka is such a nice smell. It's like, it's sweet, but it's like a deep sweet, if that makes sense. Um, it's like a really rich toffee. That's what I would describe it as. It's like a, the natural, a natural toffee. That's what, that's kind of what it's like. Um, but people have absolutely... I love Lush anyway. I use a lot of Lush products and I've had this for a while. Um, but 
I've seen a lot of articles as well about how it's really, really helped people sleep. And people have also used it for their kids to help them sleep. I actually saw, uh, read an article from a mum who had a child with autism and he had really, really bad trouble sleeping. I think he was about 10 or 11, really, really bad trouble sleeping. And she heard things about this and she used it and it helped him sleep. And it was like the only thing that could help him sleep. Um, Cause obviously she tried everything else. So yeah, I would recommend this one. And if you can get the body wash to go with it, it's like so dreamy, like just have a shower or a bath with that. Wash your body with that, get out, put this on. Um, when I don't feel like um, moisturizing my whole body because let's face it, that takes time. Sometimes just before I go to bed, I'll like rub it into like my chest or um, like my forearms. Um, and it just smells so lovely and it gets you to sleep really, really well. So that's another good one. Um, I also find re reading really relaxing. Um, I don't read as much as um, I want to, to be honest. I have to admit like, as much as you know too much sort of being on your phone isn't necessarily good for you especially when you're in bed and you're trying to go to sleep but you're scrolling like I'm a serial scroller I can't help it like Instagram I am just scrolling I'm on the explore page just looking at different things like I just can't help it I feel like I'm quite a nosy person but then I'm also like I don't mind people being nosy towards me which is, I guess, another reason why I'm doing this as well, because I don't mind. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of openly admit that I'm quite nosy. Um, but yeah, but when I lived at home as well, my mum used to always tell me off. She used to come in my room at half 11 and be like, what are you actually looking at? And I'd be like, don't really know. I've actually scrolled past the same things like four times. She'd be like, go to bed. Um, so the... The problem with phones is, is that they emit this thing called blue light and blue light essentially keeps you more alert, um, which is why if you scroll on your phone for ages before you go to bed, you might have trouble sleeping. And I would say that getting a good night's sleep can be really beneficial for your anxiety. You've got a clearer head, you can think clearer, you know, when you're tired, you feel generally worse anyway. Um, so you know, kind of getting a good night's sleep can be really, really good for your anxiety, you know, just to feel a bit fresher in the morning. Um, iPhones actually have the feature, because I, I have an iPhone, and iPhones have this feature where you can um, set it to like um, night light kind of mode. And basically what it does is it gets the blue light off of your screen. So it turns it to like a, it turns everything on your screen like an orangey color rather than like that bright light. Even though it's called blue light, it's not actually light that's blue. <laughs> it's, it's like bright light. They just call it blue light for some reason. Um, so yeah, that can keep your mind really alert. So try to switch off, or if you're a serial scroller like me, try to at least use the night mode on your phone to turn your screen orange so that you're not taking in lots of blue light. Um, another tip I have as well is to use um, uh, meditation apps um, and now meditation isn't like when you're on the floor and you've crossed your legs and you're going oh, like that <laughs> like how to how people typically um, think of meditation um, but you can get apps I had an app there's an app called calm I believe and then I have another app as well. But if you just type in on the App Store or Google Play Store or whatever, um, uh, like meditation for anxiety, um, basically what it is, is when you're laying down um, just before you're about to go to bed, you like listen to it. There's lots of different ones, but this is my favorite one. You listen to it and um, it speaks to you and helps you drift off, but in a way that's like meditating. So it can be really relaxing for your anxiety. Um, and you basically start from your toes and you relax your whole body from your toes to your head. And at the same time, the voice 
is um, it's giving you like pos positive affirmations. So it's telling you, you know, you're going to do great and, um, you know, not to worry about things that haven't happened yet and things like that. And it can just be like a really nice alternative um, when you're going to bed. Um, I would definitely give that a go as well because it does really work. Um, I really, really like doing that and I do use those apps. Um, but then you can also, they also do other ones as well that you can just listen, you can listen to when you're actually having a panic attack. Um, I've used them before and they're quite good. It just helps you control your breathing a little bit better and it, someone's kind of coaching you through it. So you can just purely focus on their voice and being calm and, um, you know, without sort of trying to sort it all out yourself and getting a bit overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, I would say those are a few tips um, for anyone who suffers with anxiety. They're things that work for me. I'm only telling you things that I've experienced and things that work for me. But if you have any really good tips, um, leave them in the comments or message me them. Like I love to hear other people's um, views and what works for them. Um, because then you can try it out and see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, oh well, you tried it. But if it does, it could be really, really good for you. Um, so yeah, that's... I didn't really know I was going to do like a tips video today, but that's kind of how it uh, started off, so I thought I'd just go with it. Um, this is day 17 now? I can't believe it's day 17. It's going so fast. I keep saying that in these videos, it's getting a bit old now. Um, but yeah, so I will speak to you tomorrow. I'll upload the video a lot earlier because I'll be filming when I'm getting ready or just before I go out. Um, because I'll be back really, really late tomorrow because it's our staff Christmas party. Um, and I don't want to miss a day. So I'll do it when I get home, when I'm getting ready. Um, so yeah, I will speak to you in tomorrow's video and please leave any tips and tricks below because I'd love to hear um, other people's. Bye, guys.